We will talk in this lecture uh, about the tight bond design. The tight bond design is called the time to event uh, Bayesian optimal interval design uh, for the phase one trials. Okay, and uh, also here I should say the thanks for, for using the slides from Professor Yingyuan from MD Anderson Cancer Center Biostat Department. Here is the outline of this lecture. Uh, I firstly will uh, recap uh, what is the Bayesian optimal interval design, a bone design. And then uh, we will see that what kind of logistic difficulty associated with late onset toxicity and also uh, fast accrual. And then uh, we will introduce the uh, time to event bone design, tight bone design. And some numerical study uh, will be uh, demonstrated uh, to show the uh, the property of this uh, time time bond design, and also I will show how to implement this design uh, in a short software shiny app. Okay, so firstly, uh, the bond design. Uh, if you are not familiar with the bond design, you can see my previous lectures uh, specific for introducing uh, the bond design. Uh, we can see here. Here is a schema or flow chart uh, for the bond design. Uh, this design is uh, very easy to implement, uh, transparent uh, to the clinicians. For example, uh, at any kind of stage, uh, for example, in the dose level J, and we can compute the DLT rate as a current dose J. And uh, how to compute the DLT rate is just uh, the form formula is just shown at the bottom of this slide. It's very easy. The numerator is just uh, simply the number of patients having DLT uh, as a current dose. And the denominator is the number of patients treated as a current dose. For example, you have um, six patients treated as a current dose and the two have DLT. So the DLT rate as a current dose is estimated to be um, two over six, and that is one third. Okay, and if you compute the DLT rate and you can compile to the two boundaries, the boundary lambda E and the boundary lambda D. Uh, lambda E is uh, escalation boundary. So if your estimated DLT rate uh, is smaller than or equal to this lambda E, uh, and this means the current dose is uh, under therapeutic, is under dosing, is safe. So uh, the action is to escalate the dose. Otherwise, uh, if the estimated DLT rate is greater than or equal to lambda D, Mm, we should de-escalate those. For example, in this case, this means the current dose is over-toxic. Otherwise, if the estimated DLT is falling into the two boundaries in the middle of these boundaries, uh, we should return the current dose. Return is means that uh, we will treat, continue to treat the next cohort of patients uh, at this dose level. So we will repeat this kind of procedure mm, until we reach to the per specified maximum sample size uh, and the study is just done and we can see like the MTD. Okay, so from this flow chart, you can see that for the bone design, uh, the most important components is the lambda E and lambda D. Okay, but luckily uh, the uh, proposed, uh, the derived, developer for the bone design has, has uh, derived the two boundaries uh, for the users. For example, here is uh, a kind of table uh, for, for different target tox toxicity rate. So for example, if our target toxicity rate of the DM, DM, uh, uh, DLT for the MTD is 0.25, that is 25% of toxicity rate. This is our targeted toxicity rate. Um, the bone design can produce uh, the two boundaries uh, just to highlight in red color here. So at any time, you can just compare uh, to these two boundaries uh, to make your uh, escalation or de-escalation or return uh, three kinds of actions uh, uh, during your trial process. And uh, these kind of boundaries uh, here is just a, main, just a little bit to recap again, if you have already or not, or not see my previous lectures is that the two boundaries are derived to, uh, to minimize the 
the probability of making incorrect decisions of those escalation the escalation that is means that we have a target function uh, to minimize the incorrect decision and uh, these two boundaries uh, can minimize this kind of incorrect decision okay so this is a kind of personalized uh, treatment options uh, for the phase one uh, those funding trials and if uh, the target is 25%, as we have already uh, seen before. Uh, we can produce this kind of uh, flowchart in your protocol, and uh, and you can use this protocol, uh, uh, this flowchart in your protocol. And here is a, a a path, a kind of design to demonstrate uh, how to how to use a bone design uh, for the escalation uh, the escalation. Okay, so for this example, um, the target, the DLT target is uh, uh, 30%. Sometimes I use a target DLT, sometimes I use a target toxicity rate. So this is just in interchangeable uh, in my context. Okay, and then by the bone package or the bone shining app, uh, we can generate this kind of uh, decision table. Okay, uh, in this table, we can see that uh, how many patients enrolled, uh, how many DLT occurred, and we can then make the uh, suitable uh, decision. Okay. Uh, for this trial, you can see here it has uh, three kind of colors or symbols. For this uh, orange, uh, this means that no DLT for this patient. If blue, this means DLT. If like this cross and this is square, uh, symbol, uh, this means that this patient is not available at uh, that time. In these trials, we have, you can see that we have five per specified dose levels are from one uh, to five. And the starting dose is the lowest dose, uh, dose level one, because we want to, for this specific uh, trial, we want to accelerate uh, the dose funding uh, precise. Uh, we apply the, the titri titration, uh, we apply the titration procedure uh, in the uh, firstly, initially. The, tit the titration is means that uh, if no DIT occurred, we just enroll the patient one by one uh, until uh, the first DIT occurred and then we just expand it to uh, uh, the cohort size of three. Okay, so for example, in this trial, we can see that in the first dose, we enroll uh, one patient, the number one patient. And this patient, for example, after the first course of the treatment, no DLT occurred. Okay, and the one, and then we escalate to the dose level two. And because uh, no DLT, so we still enroll just one patient here. And after the, uh, the course, the first course finished at the dose level two, this patient still not uh, being observed DIT. So we just uh, escalate, as make escalation decision again to the dose level three. And we firstly just enroll one patient. Uh, this is the third patient. After the first course, we see that this patient experienced the DIT. So we expand to enroll another two patients together. Currently, uh, we enroll, you can see that we enroll three patients uh, total, uh, patient four fourth and fifth. And after enroll these three patients, uh, we can see uh, one DLT and two non-DLT. Okay, so we can just check this decision table. We have three patients. We have one DLT. So it's in the middle, right? Zero should escalate, two should de-escalate. Zero is means we should, we should return or stay. Okay, so after three, four, and fifth, third, fourth and the fifth patients being enrolled and based on one DLT among these three patients, we make the decision to return uh, to continue the treat and the next cohort of patients at the dose level three. So we enroll next three patients, six, seven, eight. And we can see that after enrolling these three patients at the, at the evaluation time, uh, we found that the eighth patient uh, is not available. So we uh, should still make the decision based on currently five patients in total, right? To make the uh, escalation, the escalation decision. Okay, so currently at those level three, 
we have five patients from three from the third patients to the seventh patients. The eighth, eighth patient is not available, it's just excluded from our analysis. And we see among these five patients, there are one DLT. Okay, so in this decision table, we see that we have five patients now, and we have one patient. So this means that DLT smaller or equal to one, we should escalate. Okay, so, so and then we just uh, go up to the first uh, dose level, right? And we enroll three patients. Okay, and uh, after uh, the evaluation window, uh, we found that uh, there are two DLTs among the three patients. Okay, I see here, just stop and the three plus three. So this means that if we apply the three plus three uh, design uh, for this study, uh, this study should stop here. And then we select those level three as a as MTD. Uh, but on, in the bone design, not necessarily. You can see later, we have three patients and the two DLTs. We just check this table. So the three patients, two DLTs. The two DLTs is just corresponding to this row. This row is the escalate, right? Three, two DLTs. So we should the escalate back to the dose level three. Okay. And then we enroll three more patients. And these three patients, none of them uh, have the DLT. So currently we have this is five patients, and this is three patients, and we have eight patients in total and one DLT. So we check this decision table. We have eight patients and just one DLT. So the decision is to escalate. So we escalate again back to the dose level four. And we enroll three patients. We can see here now all patients have DLT. So currently at this stage at the dose level four, we have six patients in total and two DLT. Okay, we check this decision table. We have six patients in total and two DLT, two is just in the middle. So we should stay, right? We should continue to treat the next cohort patients still on the dose level four. So we enroll the 18, 19, 20 member, yeah, these index patients. And we found that among these three patients, uh, one patient is not available and two patients, no DLT. So currently we have three plus three, six, six plus two, eight patients. Eight patients have two uh, DLTs. We check this table. We have eight patients, we have two DLTs. So we should still, right, stay on, on, on the fourth dose level. So we just continue this precise until uh, we reach to the pre-specified 30 patients in total. Okay, so finally, this is just the final results. Okay, finally, we just uh, enroll 17 patients on the fourth dose level and the five DRTs in total, blue points here, symbol here, and it's approximately to the uh, 24, 29%. So this is very close to the 30% by the bond design. So this means that mm, if we're using the three plus three, we will miss uh, the correct MTD, right? But if we're using the bond design, uh, we can correctly find uh, the four stores as a true MTD. Okay, so this is uh, one example. Okay.